Welcome back to Court TV Live, your front row seat to justice. I'm Julie Grant. The Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation trial centers around the very serious issue of domestic violence. And there are many different reasons why a victim of domestic violence decides to stay in that situation. One of those reasons, many victims are afraid to leave or unable to leave their animals behind. Fortunately, there are organizations that can help domestic violence victims in those incident instances and do so much more. I'm happy to introduce to you someone I know very well, Grace Coleman, a domestic violence expert and her dog, canine court advocate, Penny. Grace is the executive director of Crisis Center North, which is a counseling and educational resource center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, that helps survivors of domestic violence and their children. She's worked in the domestic violence prevention movement since the year 1999. Wow, is that impressive. And she lends her personal dogs, one of them you see here, Penny, and another dog, that she owns personally, Ari. She lends them to CCN's Pause for Empowerment program. Uh, that is a program I serve as an advisor on their board. And they're canine court advocates. They help survivors go to magistrate court and testify against their abusers. The dogs also, well, there's Ari, there's the other dog that just entered <laughs> the picture. They also help survivors and their kids in private counseling sessions. Uh, I know Grace and the dogs well and love them so much. And I know you will too. As we talk to them this afternoon, Grace, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks so much for having us, Julie. Oh, and the dogs, oh my gosh, they're just so incredible. I got to tell our viewers a little bit about them as we were previewing your interview, uh, but you can tell us the most. The PAUSE program, the importance of it for victims. Talk to us about it, please. Uh, the PAUSE for Empowerment program is one of the programs at Crisis Center North that truly holds my heart. And it's such an important program given that almost half of all victims won't leave an abusive relationship if there aren't places to take their pets. And right now nationally, there's really a shortage of that in that about 17% across the country of domestic violence centers have the capacity to take pets. So it's really an important issue for domestic violence centers to focus on. Right. And I know that Crisis Center North, in particular, the PAUSE program, was just awarded a big national grant that will help with this, right? <laughs> Yes, we were very excited to expand our Pause for Empowerment program through a grant from the Office of Victims of Crime through the Department of Justice. And our project will help us provide housing for companion animals and their pets so that victims don't have to choose between safety and leaving their pets behind. Now they, they can be together. It's just wonderful because really something that I think is key to understand, and I know you know this well, the advocates that work at CCN know this well, there's an intersection between animal violence and human violence, is there not? Uh, there's there is definitely an intersection between human and animal abuse and so by addressing that intersection we can better work together as a community to help prevent further violence so i mean definitely in um, homes where domestic violence is present pets are often used as tools um, to manipulate a victim and so pets can often also be victims of domestic violence it, it's just really, really fascinating to understand and can be hard to understand, I think confusing. And um, I know one thing that uh, you've been doing with the organization in the state of Pennsylvania and uh, there are other similar organizations is, is trying to link up with other advocates, for instance, those who advocate uh, to help children who are in abusive situations. Those, you know, for instance, I know in Pennsylvania, you work with those at the PA Humane Society um, who are animal advocates because oftentimes it's not just one problem that's going on in a home, right? Correct. Yeah, um, I'm very pr proud to be a part of the Keystone Link, which is a statewide network that connects to the National Link Coalition. And the National Link Coalition is really exploring that intersectionality between human and animal abuse. So it allows professionals to come together from domestic violence, sexual assault, the humane societies, um, child abuse organizations. And together, we hope that we can find solutions for the problem. Yeah, it's a tough, tough problem to tackle. And 
all of you who work in the DV prevention movement know how complicated it is, how upsetting. I mean, you're seeing people that might be leaving their homes with nothing. They're leaving their possessions behind, or maybe they've taken their pet with them and they're coming to, to see you all for help. And um, you've come up with so many different creative ways um, to help them. Tell us kind of, you know, what that looks like when a person is in crisis and they, they come to you for that relief. Well, through a new grant from OVC, we have a lot more resources and tools to be able to help victims. So often when they're escaping abuse, we need to look at the animal and make sure the animal is up to date on vaccines and various shots in order to be able to shelter the animal either with the victim or to provide temporary shelter as the victim tries to find other resources available to them. So our grant allows us to provide stipends for animals that have been abused in domestic situations as well as general health care and to form a greater coalition with our local um, animal welfare providers and veterinarians in terms of addressing the abuse. Uh, Julie, my dad was a veterinarian and I grew up in a veterinary clinic and I can tell you firsthand that veterinarians are often very trusted by women um, in particular to hear what's going on in a home and so I witnessed many of those conversations with my father and knew the importance that veterinarians could play in this um, problem. Right, and your dad would be so proud of Penny, because um, I know you've told me your dad would always say a good dog is a dog with a job, and Penny right. is a shelter dog, uh, which is, is really remarkable, and if I can brag about Penny, I feel like I can do that, Grace, because I'm on the pause board, so I feel like I can brag about her. As far as we know, she is the first shelter dog in Pennsylvania to be doing canine court advocacy. So she was rescued from a shelter and has served 11 years helping victims go yeah. to the magistrate <laughs> court, face their abusers, and then helping them and their kids privately. Uh, it, it's, it's remarkable. She's Penny the Pioneer. She really is. <laughs> yeah, when we saw her, it was funny. I I just knew that we had a job to do together. And at the time that I adopted her, I didn't know what it was. But um, she certainly has opened up doors for other canine advocates, including Ari. As you can see today, you kind of caught nap time, Julie. So That's okay. Um, they deserve a break. <laughs> <laughs> they work hard, Grace. They deserve a break. It's Friday. <laughs> um, no, absolutely. And I, I had... Um, wanted to ask you about some things uh, that we can all take away from this conversation where we're talking about domestic violence and so let's talk about three things that us as community members can do uh, the steps we can take to try to help in the dv prevention movement there are so many things that you can do, but if I could isolate three, I think the most important things is for us to take the opportunity to teach about healthy relationships to students in schools and beyond. Um, supporting your local domestic violence center is, as you do, Julie, right? By becoming involved as an advisory board member, a board member, donating, volunteering your time, energy, and efforts while you're at the, the center. And also, as we are today, engaging in a national dialogue about domestic violence. It's a pretty pervasive problem, and it requires all hands on deck. Definitely. And then for individuals, if somebody's watching this right now saying, like, what can I do myself if I want to do something, you know, right now to help? Yeah, I think individuals can get involved in a lot of ways, including volunteering, um, educating themselves about the root and systemic causes of domestic violence. It's more complicated than individuals may um, realize. And also just watching things like um, sexist language and avoiding that kind of language. Language matters, how we frame things matters. And then avoid victim blaming, um, create a culture that's supportive to victims. Most definitely, Grace, thank you for all of that. And we have a number sure. we wanna share on the screen right now. If you or someone you know is in need of immediate assistance, you can always call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. The number is easy to remember, 1-800-799-SAFE or 1-800-799-7233.
Now, Grace, before we say goodbye to you, I'm going to put you on the spot and really ask you uh, to brag about the program, the Pause for Empowerment program, and with these dogs, Penny. And there he is. He shows up <laughs> just in time. There's Mr. Ari. Uh, Want to give him some praise. This program is nationally recognized that you started with the idea of sending Penny into counseling with a little boy at the center, huh? Yeah, uh, a little boy came to the center and he was not comfortable in his counseling sessions and he would only talk if Penny was there. And so then we realized we were kind of on to something. So we, we tried to rescue the shelter dogs and give them a role and uh, we're very pleased. Penny was an ACE uh, honoree this year. So she was featured on ESPN for her pioneering work and um, she's given other opportunities to dogs like Ari. We have a third dog Rune. Uh, Rune is a, an amazing dog that we actually have raised in court. Like Rune started when she was 11 weeks old in the court system and has known nothing but her, her job there. So we're excited to give um, lots of canines the opportunity to do what Penny has done. Oh, well, we are so happy to have had this opportunity to talk with you on the show. Grace Coleman, thank you for all the remarkable work that you do in the domestic violence prevention movement and thank you so much for the dogs, Penny and Ari, for coming on and their work <laughs> in the nasty. movement as well. They're just amazing. Uh, great to see you and keep up the, the incredible work. We'll speak again soon.